Now let us try to solve a problem based on Kirchhoff's rules. Now just to revise Kirchhoff's rules, the first rule was the junction rule that at any junction the total current is equal to zero and the second is loop rule. that the total potential difference across a loop is zero. Okay. Now before starting solving such problems, the first thing you have to do is just take, assume directions of current as you want to. Okay. Assume current directions. Now what does this mean that assume current directions in this circuit in any direction you want to. Okay. Now let us say that I, I want to start from here from this loop. So and I want that the current should flow in the upward direction. Okay. So let me say that this current is I3 but I would just like to take as it is in your book. But the directions I'm taking different, okay? Or let us say that I3 is in the upward direction, okay? And then this I3, when it reaches this junction, it separates into two currents, this current and the current in the other direction, okay? So then let us say that this is I1 and this current is I2 and we have taken these directions randomly in any direction we want to. Okay, You can also take any other direction. Maybe suppose that if I redraw this circuit, I can also take any other direction also. So let us say that I want to follow this and maybe I want to start from here. Okay. So let us say if this is I1 and then this current is separating into two parts. So let's say some of the current goes in this direction and some of the current goes in this direction. Okay. So let us say this is I2 and this is I3. We can also do this. Okay. So let us try to solve for this circuit and you can also solve for this one if you want. But let us just try to solve for this one because it is different to what is done. A little bit different to what is done in the book okay so then it will be 14 volts and this is 4 ohms and 10 volts and 6 ohms and 2 ohms okay now if we just talk about this part of the circuit this loop the first one okay so in this loop the current is flowing from here and then here and then here so here, this is because it's I2, so here it will be I2, okay? And then here also it is I2, and here also it will be I2, okay? Now let's talk about the loop which is the second loop, okay? So for the second loop, the current along this wire is I1. Here it is I3, so here also it will be I3. And here also it will be I3 and here it will be I1 okay. so now we have this is one loop and this is the second loop so let us talk about them one by one okay now from the junction rule if we directly see what's happening at the junction so in this diagram we have this is one of the junctions okay so in this junction I1 is coming and it is being split into I2 and I3. Okay, So we can say that I1 is equal to I2 plus I2 plus I3. Okay, Because this is being split into two parts I2 and I3. And also here also it means that I2 and I3 will join together to form I. Okay. So again we can write this equation that I1 will be equal to I2 plus I3. I hope you understood this at the junctions. Now let's talk about the loop rule. So let's talk about the first loop first. Okay. So in the first loop how we have to 
how we have to take care of the signs of the potential that I'm going to explain you. So let me just draw the f only the first loop so that it is clear. So this is our first loop and it is 14 volts here, 4 ohms and 10 volts and 6 ohms. Current I2, current I2, I1 and I1. Okay. So then it means that if we start from any point, let us say that we start from here. Okay. And then we move along this direction. Now you have to take care that when we are moving from plus to minus, then if so it is plus v and this is minus v. So delta v will be minus v minus plus v. So it will be minus 2v. Okay. So whenever we are moving from plus to minus, positive to negative potential, you will have a negative written with the change in potential. Okay. Also, we can also understand it for current. Suppose if, the, if you have a resistor here and current is also in the same direction. So you know that current is current always flows from positive to negative. So it means that if the current direction is this, it means that plus will be here and minus will be here. And if the resistor has a resistance of R, then delta V on this resistor will be minus IR. Okay. Now suppose that there is a battery which is like this and the current is flowing in this direction. But for battery you need not talk about current. Okay. So if we are moving from this, this point to this point, so we are moving from plus to minus. So it will be plus delta V because we are moving from minus to plus. If we are moving from plus to minus then it will be negative sign with the voltage. If suppose the case is opposite then delta V will the change in potential will be negative of the potential. Okay. So this is this is the only rules these are the only rules you will have to apply when we are moving in this circuit. So let us say that I am starting from here and then I'll move to this battery and then this resistor. So and then we'll come back to this point. Okay, so we start from here and let's use the loop rule. So first of all, what will be the potential at this battery? Because it's minus and plus. So we are moving from minus to plus. So it will be 10 volts. Now let's come to this resistor. So now the current is in this direction and so it means it is plus here and minus here because current is always from plus to minus so it will be minus 6 I1 now let's move along this wire so the current is I2 but the battery we are moving from minus to plus so when we move from minus to plus where is it? minus to plus it will be plus delta V so it will be plus 14 volts okay and then let's come to this res resistor so we we have come to this point now so when we come to this resistor because the current is down in the downward direction so plus is here minus is here and the current is I2 it will be minus 4 I2 should be equal to 0 okay so let us say this is equation 1 and let us just see what we can get from here. Now we can get rid of this volts for some time because this is a voltage, this is a voltage, this is a voltage, this is a voltage. Okay. So we can also write this equation as 10 plus 14, 24 minus 6i1 minus 4i2 will be equal to 0 or we can also write this equation as 12 minus 3i1 minus 2i2 is equal to 0 or 3i1 plus 2i2 is equal to 12. Let us say this is another equation. So let's say this is equation 2. 
So let's uh, try to understand it now again. Uh, the loop rule for the second loop now. Okay, so we have two equations. And now let's see what happens in the second loop. So now we're talking about this loop. So in the second loop, we have a battery, a resistor, a resistor, okay, and the direction of current is I1, I1, I3, and it's 2 ohms, 10 volts, 6 ohms. Now let's talk about this resistor in this loop. Okay. Now for this loop again, let us say that we are again moving in a clockwise direction. You can move in any direction. Okay. So let's say that we are moving in this direction first. Okay. So now we are moving in this direction but the current is flowing in this direction, in the opposite direction. So it means that the positive of the current is here and negative of the current is here. So we are moving from negative to positive. So it will be plus I3 plus 2 I3. Okay, And then we move to this resistor. Now current is moving in this direction so it means plus is here and minus is here. So we are moving from minus to plus. So it will be 6i1 and then we are moving from plus to minus. So it will be minus 10 volts will be equal to 0. So this is the third equation we get and we can also write it as i3 plus 3i1 minus 10 volt is equal to 0. So this is equation number 3 now. And the last two equations were 3i1 plus 2i2 is equal to 12 and i1 is equal to i2 plus i3. So these are the three equations we have now. Okay. So now let's just try to solve this equation. So it will be 3i1, put the value of i3 from this equation into this one. So it will be i1 minus i2 will be equal to 10 volts. You can also neglect this whole because everything is in volts. Okay. So then it will be 4i1 minus i2. Again, I think I've made a mistake here. It should be 5. It should be equal to 5. And we have this equation, so it will be 3i1 plus 2i. Now it is just a solution of these equations. You can solve it as you want to. So multiply it with 2. So it will be 8i1 minus 2i2 is equal to 10. So then it will become these get cancelled. 11 I1 will be equal to 22 and I1 will be equal to 22 upon 11 which will be 2 amperes with a positive sign. Now you know what is I1. So from here you can find out what is I2. So it will be 4 to the 8 amps minus I2 will be equal to 5. So in this equation, okay, if you just put the value of I1, so I2 will be equal to 3 amps. And then let's find out what is I3, which can be found from this equation also. You can use any equation you want to. So I3 will be, I1 is 2 amperes, which will be equal to I2. 3 amperes plus I3. I3 will be minus 1 amperes. So let me just tell you what is the meaning of this minus sign here. 
so we have these currents. I1 is a positive number. It means that this direction of current is correct. Okay, so it means I1 is correct. So this means that direction of I1 is correct. Okay, and this is also positive. This is also positive. So the direction of I2 is also correct. But I3 is minus. It means that the direction of I3 is opposite to what we have assumed. Okay, so it means that in reality, I1 is correct, I2 is correct, I3 will be in the upward direction. This is only so. This means that at at the end, only this negative signs and positive signs. If you get negative sign. It means the direction is wrong and nothing else. So you can take any direction you want to, and uh, at last you will come to know if it is right or wrong. Okay, that's all for now.